Matisse was the perfect person to pick to get both of them to question their parents. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's a little bit of both of them. There's not another story where I can think this one's going to get both of them to question their parents because you tell the Athens story, which is the origin of their, their feud, where they were vying for the city of Athens. Obviously, Athena won it because she gave them a olive tree, whereas Poseidon gave them water. Um, you know, they, they both can make an argument. I mean, both of the gods made an argument on their side. But Medusa's the one where it's like Poseidon was wrong because, at least in the version that's in this universe, she was assaulted by him. And Athena is wrong because she punished her for being assaulted. Yeah, that's never the right thing to do. I'm remembering how in the books there's much more of a discussion about, um, like, Annabeth doesn't like Percy at first because he's Poseidon's kid, and it's a whole, they talk about that, like, rivalry throughout the first book. Like, when they get to the end, like, when he's going to go meet with Zeus, she's like, and he's like, if the war happens again, like, what side would we be on? And she's like, I would be on your side, idiot. We're friends. <laughs> but, like, that's, like, a whole storyline that I'm glad that they don't have in the in the show because it just doesn't really matter. There's other things. But yeah. it is interesting when it comes to this stuff with Medusa and everything because, I don't know, it just, it's just uncomfortable. <laughs> Neither one of them like to think about this and they already don't like each other. And now they're like being confronted with how their parents did like opposite things basically to somebody and was involved in hurting this person that they wouldn't be okay with. Like you can't, you can't really justify it. Like what really, no matter what happened to Medusa, she was like, like if you go with like the myth that they're going with that she was a normal person and then was like made into this other thing because of being involved with the gods. Like, it's never right to like do that to somebody because you're upset with them. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just, it makes them think about, it's very, I think it's easy for people like Annabeth who have been at camp their whole life, who have never had to be on the outside to just tell herself that like her mom always does the right thing. And the gods are just always right and just, or like, even if they're not, they're like the only thing that we have. So this is just what I'm going to do. It's a whole other thing to actually meet people that are like telling you, no, this person ruined my life. Yeah. <laughs> and I keep having, I keep coming back and getting killed. And then I just come back again later. And there's no like way to get out of this. And I wish that I could just get out of it, but I can't. It's like so much harder to actually deal with that. And they're actually having to. Yeah, yeah. And God, I just lost my train of thought. But with um with the whole Medusa myth, I I love that Rick also pulled in that feminist part. That feminist, like, you know, she didn't deserve it because I mean there's no way to logic yourself out of like you can logic okay athena's temple was desecrated um that's not a good enough reason because who's the actual perpetrator of the desecration it would be poseidon you know like the thing i was gonna say before was i really like how they talked about it with like like that quote that i sent you that rick said where he was saying that it's, a, it's an abuse of power like no matter what happened i was like oh my god <laughs> i love that you brought that up because it is true like these are literal gods and so like athena is mad and wanting to take out her anger on medusa who does not have the same amount of power as she does even if she was like a gorgon it's still not at the same level yeah and so it's like you're mad that somebody that you ignored was that who said that they were dedicated to you did one thing one time and you're so angry that you're now taking all of your power out on them when they when you know that they can't do it it's like they can't do anything back to you to hurt you in the same way that you're hurting them yeah and so it's like it's not right that you did this and that's the part of like the god stories that i love that percy jackson brings up all the time that it's like you know that what you're you have to know that you're misusing the power that you have because there's no way that anyone can actually do anything to you. We're like, 
we're all just kind of sitting here like at the whims of you and if we say one thing badly you like toss us aside like per, like in the next episode percy sends them like or at the end of this episode percy is impertinent and he sends them medusa's head like I don't know what else to do with this thing and you guys are annoying he sends them her head and that is enough for them to be like they deserve to die and it's like how how is anyone supposed to ever deal with you if you do one thing that they don't like and it doesn't hurt anybody it doesn't like nobody even knows about it except for you and your like response to that is you should die now yeah <laughs> Well, and I, it goes back to, like, my whole thought that the, the gods of Olympus are more like the Volturi, because it's very much a, we're immortal, we're going to live forever, you guys are puny mortals, there's so many of you, like, there's going to be more of you, so your life is inconsequential, and I think the Iliad illustrates that kind of the best of this attitude that they have towards mortals, where you see them joining people on the battlefield. You see them taking over certain people's images and then like rounding up troops to go harass somebody. Or you see like there was, I was actually rereading a part because I was going to make a video on it where, um, Hector comes in from battle and he's told to tell the women by like one of the Trojan seers, tell the women, go lay one of your best robes on Athena's knees and tell her you're going to sacrifice 11 cows to her if she can bring back the husbands, the fathers home safely. And um, Athena literally just ignores them. She just like, yeah. And so they think these mortals are so inconsequential. They're literally playing with them on the battlefield like a game of chess man i was just thinking i was just thinking of something and i like lost it for a second <laughs> but what i was thinking about is how the way that this world works where people where the gods like don't treat people with respect they treat them like playthings all the time or just they don't treat them like people or just people who exist outside of what they want to use them for um I think it's interesting to watch how the demigod kids like respond to being in that world by like yeah. Percy and it, I'm, I'm thinking about the argument yeah. Percy and, and Annabeth and Grover like who literally just like tries to see is like her hat is from her mom and and Percy's like okay I, could, I get that I just don't know what else we're gonna do with this freaking head at this point. But with like with Annabeth, he's like, dude, seriously, <laughs> like, what are you, are you really like acting like he's a bad person because he wants to save his mother's life? <laughs> like, but that's like how the stuff with like Athena can like really get to you, how she like is trying so hard to be a good Athena daughter that she like doesn't see like the humanity of Percy until it literally like slaps her in the face. <laughs> and yeah. she's like forced to see it because she just has it in her head that she has to be the one in charge and she has to be the one doing everything <laughs> yeah she really she loves her position she's very protective of it <laughs> she's i i think of like myself and i think maybe even you when you were younger that like we like feeling like we're needed mm -hmm. and that annabeth's role is that she knows how to solve everybody's problems essentially yeah. And so when when things come up that she doesn't know about or problems happen that you can't she literally like cannot solve like you cannot no matter what you do, you can't solve the fact that Percy's mom is stuck in the underworld and that she shouldn't be there right now and that you would care and you would care about that. Mm -hmm. um, that that's yeah that's gonna get that's gonna get to anybody but especially someone like annabeth who doesn't have family outside of this like found family she has already and i think a lot of this episode is her realizing like is it really worth it for me to play this role if i'm here by myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love how they i love how they depicted that wrestling with that throughout this like first series i think the actress leah her name's leah right right okay. is it leah or leah leah <laughs> yeah she's so good she's so good, so good.